Former legislator Lam Chuk Ting didn't seem surprised when police came knocking at his front door early on Wednesday morning. They tell him he's suspected of violating the new national security law, a scene played out of more than 50 other addresses in Hong Kong. The drama was recorded by an unidentified person inside Lam's home and later posted on his Facebook page before he was taken away. Al Jazeera had interviewed him several weeks ago, just after he resigned as a pro-democracy politician, along with almost the entire opposition camp. I will keep fighting for democracy of Hong Kong. We will never surrender. That was in response to the disqualification of four fellow legislators following a ruling by China's highest political body. Police say Wednesday's operation involved more than a thousand officers and involved raids on three media outlets as well as a law office where a solicitor, who's also a US citizen, was arrested. Uh, we have arrested 53 persons for the offenses of a subversion under the, uh, uh, the, the, um, the national security law. The detentions were linked to an unofficial primary vote held last July to select candidates for the legislative elections due two months later, a poll that was eventually cancelled with the Hong Kong government citing COVID-19. Now all those involved in organising that primary are suspected of subversion, which carries a maximum sentence of life imprisonment. A further sign of the tightening authoritarian grip here, says one analyst. It seems to me this is the Chinese Communist Party trying to uh, change the political culture of Hong Kong. It's imposing Leninism. Why did they arrest these people? Because they demonstrated capacity to organize. The US president-elect Joe Biden has said that China will be at the center of his foreign policy. So it's possible Hong Kong will be an early point of friction with China's president Xi Jinping, who has said the campaign against dissent here is justified in the name of safeguarding national security. Adrian Brown, Al Jazeera, Hong Kong. Well, in July, Hong Kong's opposition held an unofficial primary vote to select candidates for the parliamentary election, as Adrian was explaining. China said those primaries violated the wide-reaching national security legislation it imposed on Hong Kong a month earlier. Now, the law gives broad powers to punish political crimes, and it was the result of a year of anti-government protests. China says the national security law is going to help return stability to the territory, but human rights groups say it erodes freedom. Countries like Canada and the UK began making immigration easier for Hong Kongers as some activists began fleeing the territory. Well, let's speak to Sonny Chung. He's a pro-democracy activist. He left Hong Kong in August. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. I want to ask you, first of all, about the timing of the arrests that we've just seen. Is that significant? Yes, I think this is uh, really significant because uh, we noticed that um, currently the U.S. is undergoing uh, the, the election certification and at the same time the European Union is trying to sign a new trade agreement with China. And then China is trying to uh, show its authoritarianism, trying to eradicate the whole pro-democracy camp in Hong Kong. And I think that the international community should be really alert about this phenomenon and try everything you can to help Hong Kong and counter the infiltration of the CCP. What do you think about the response that the international community has given to the pro-democracy protests and what's been happening to the activists uh, since then? I think um, actually uh, many major media um, in the rest already reported about the news, uh, which we uh, really appreciate that. However, we hope that um, the governments of each um, three world countries can also give a very quick and strong response to, um, to Hong Kongers and to the governments, because we uh, anticipate that uh, the European Union can also use the Maniski Act to sanction Hong Kong and Beijing officials who should be held responsible for this political crackdown. It seems as though there seem to be two options for, for pro-democracy activists in Hong Kong. They either stay and they get arrested or they leave and they protest outside and they can talk to organisations like ours. Which do you think is more effective when it comes to garnering international attention about this? Of course, I think um, 
we respect um, each individual's uh, choices. And then some people choose to stay, and some people uh, like me or other prominent activists like Nathan Law, we chose to flee from Hong Kong. And then we try to use um, the space and the opportunities to keep con uh, to keep continuing voicing out for Hong Kongers. And uh, at the same time, meanwhile, when people who choose um, to stay in Hong Kong, they will keep the fight on and they will keep the outspoken. When you say that they're going to keep the fight on, how do you see that working, given the kind of arrests, the kind of crackdowns that we're seeing in Hong Kong? Of course, I mean, um, the, the freedom, um, the space, the opportunities will be really limited um, on the ground. And therefore, we do need the help from the international community because uh, I think uh, in the foreseeable future, uh, we can uh, no longer anticipate there will be any large-scale uh, social protests in Hong Kong uh, due to the repression and also the COVID-19. And at the same time, when most of the politician activists are all arrested um, due to this incident, and that means our whole pro-democracy camp is being eradicated by the Beijing government. And that's why we need help from the international community. We should not abandon the autonomy and freedom of Hong Kong society. There has been a lot of vocal support from international communities for what's going on in Hong Kong, for the pro-democracy movement. Doesn't seem to be a great deal of action. How concerned are you that countries are going to put trade with China ahead of the democratic concerns of Hong Kong? I am really concerned um, about um, the, com the upcoming uh, EU and China investment deal because we noticed that um, if the European Union keep uh, their uh, keep attaching with China's economy, and then the Communist Party can actually use their economic dominance, try to uh, impact the European Union to uh, to ask them not to bother about the human rights issue in China. And this is not just about Hong Kongers, also about people who currently suffer in Tibet and Xinjiang. And that's why we urge the few countries, especially the European Union, should stop and stop uh, signing the new trade deal and should uh, take a step, step back, try to reconsider adding in other human rights clauses in the uh, coming uh, investment deal. Senator Chung, we appreciate you joining us in Al Jazeera. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.